C10 Talk, episode 142. OBS takeover. Not really, but kind of. You can still find them. You know, it's not by no means impossible, but I think they'll stay relatively affordable. At least I hope so, because I think it's a good platform. And I think it's the last of the the body styles where I think the the 2000 and newer ones, I think they get too new looking where the OBS still sort of has that classic look. And like you're saying, a lot of us grew up when we were younger with those trucks around the sport truck. So we always revert back to, you know, the trucks that we remember growing up, but I, I don't think it'll ever, I think that OBS still carries that kind of classic, still that classic look to it in a sense. I think it's why some guys even, you know, like yourself probably like the square dash because it, it looks a little, little more older looking than say a round dash where it looks more modern damn son c10 nation are you thinking about upgrading that motor well psi is your go-to source for lsx conversion wiring harnesses they have been in the ls conversion business for 10 years they specialize in standalone wiring harness for gm gen 2 3 4 5 ls and lt based engines and transmissions aside from harnesses they offer components and kits for retrofitting older vehicles, PCM programming, fuel systems, engine sensors, replacement GM pigtails, and so much more. All harnesses are made with pride in the USA. In-house full-time technical support to help you with all of your installation questions, after-sales customer support, and a four-wire hookup to make the installation process as easy as possible. For our listeners, go to psiconversions.com forward slash C10 talk. PSIConversion.com forward slash C10 Talk. Use coupon code C10 Talk and you will get a free shirt and free shipping on orders over $250. Free shipping and a free t shirt. So if you're going to switch out that motor and upgrade to an LS based motor, you're ready to go with PSI. C10 Nation, let me tell you about my buddies Travis, his dad Jack, aka Dad, and Nick. They run Pro Performance, AZ Pro Performance. They're active in our community. They're C10 guys. They're always working on new stuff, like their new suspension line, React Suspension. They're master dealers for AccuAir, Dakota Digital, Bear, Boyd Welding, Vintage Air, and many more. They're C10 specialists and stock many fast-moving products backed by their stellar customer service. Not only do they sell C10 parts, but they live and breathe C10s and are very active in our community. Like I said, look for them at your next truck show. Nick might be there if they let him out, but usually Travis and his dad, Jack, and they want to talk to you and help you out with your C10 project. Follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and you can also check out their Facebook group called C10 Addiction. So check them out and let them know that I sent you. You've heard me talk about my gauges, Dakota Digital. I love them. Don't forget the interior of your build. Dakota Digital has the best gauges for our trucks. Whether you want a direct fit into the stock bezel or something mm, custom, these kits are complete with sensors for any engine. The new RTX series is really incredible. I think it stands for retro, but it should stand for rad. They look just like the stock clusters, but have all the technology you'd expect from Dakota Digital. You can change the lighting colors, customize the reading in the message centers, and do it all from the mobile app. That's right, the HDX and RTX series have Bluetooth technology, so you can mess with them from your phone. Just don't do it while you're driving. I mean, literally, I can have Yellowstone, I'm looking at RPM, trip odometer, percent fuel, oil pressure, and now I have the GPS set up. I can tell you direction, elevation, and even outside temp. Damn, son, it's like a modern truck, but even better, in a classic. Dakota Digital is absolutely the best in aftermarket gauges, so check them out at dakotadigital.com, dakotadigital.com, and you can follow them on Instagram and Facebook too. I use precision replacement parts on my builds because I demand quality and I demand precision. If you want the best weather stripping, demand precision. PRP.com, it's that easy, PRP.com. Seriously, check this out, OEM Design Parts, it's easy to install and you have a lifetime warranty. Everything from windshield seals, rear window seals, door seals, roof rail seals, vent window seals, belt line molding, glass run channels, trunk seals, hood decal, you need it, they've got it. They also have their vent window refurbishing program. You send in your wing windows and they send them back and they're completely rebuilt, disassembled, sandblasted, painted, 
and they replace and install new weather stripping, new glass, and handles. Talk about quality, talk about precision, and that's why I use Precision Replacement Parts. PRP.com and follow them on social media as well. Welcome to C10 Talk, your C10 truck podcast. Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. All right, all right, all right. What up, C10 Nation? Or in this case, possibly OBS Nation. I'm on vacation, and uh, I'm sitting on the deck of the house and uh, looking out over the lake. So, good vacation. I hope you guys had a great fourth. I did. Uh, I'm up in Montana visiting friends and family, and uh, good fourth of July, great fourth of July. Now we're up in Kalispell, so... Hanging out, having a good time. Before I left, I recorded a little episode with Travis from Pro Performance. My thought is the 88 to 98 are getting popular. And uh, what I'm looking to do is probably not quite once a month, but uh, maybe once or twice in a two-month span. I guess that would be once a month. I'm going to drop a little OBS love. So we definitely have guys in the scene that are starting to build OBS trucks. To, to name a few, we've, we've got the big cat, Dino's got a, I think he picked up like a 96 from Travis, he's going to do a pro street, Joey G's got that 454 SS, I think he's putting a GSI chassis on it, so we've got uh, plenty of players in the game that are starting to morph over to OBS trucks, and I think I'll start to evolve a little bit into that, now C10 Talk is not going anywhere, that's my passion, um, I grew up with the 8898s as well, though, so I think it's going to be fun. I think the trucks, it's, you know, the similarities uh, that that are there. You see some of the different things, but obviously that was a fun time and a new body line and so on and so forth. So let's see where it goes. I'm on vacation. I'm having a blast. Now, of course, while I'm up here, I brought my stuff. Otherwise, I wouldn't be recording this, and I kind of put one and two together, and it made 3.5, I guess, and... Or essentially, I put six and six together, and it made 12 valve. So I'm thinking, I'm like, I think that DCS is up here. So I give them a call, and DCS is Diesel Conversion Specialist. They are right around the corner from where I'm staying, reached out to them, went over there, sat down, recorded a little uh, pod for you guys. So that'll be next week. That's going to be Diesel Conversion Specialist. I would say... For explanation purposes, it's it's better to kind of think the Cummins conversion specialist. 12 valve, 24, that's what they do. That's their specialty. They have two different locations, one in Minnesota and here in Montana. And they just happen to be right here. So Sean Patterson sat down with me. We had a great time over at the shop. That'll be next week. DCS, Cummins conversion for you guys thinking about putting Cummins in your C10, your C20 your c30 your big boy whatever it is you're putting your diesel into these guys are number one that's what they do so um let's see here diesel conversion specialist i wrote something about obs here how the hell did someone come up with oh exactly how the hell did somebody come up with the name obs and nbs so if you know because I haven't really looked it up yet, but I'm kind of curious to hear how an 88 to 98 became an old body style. So if you know, let me know, Ronnie at C10 Talk, Ronnie at C10 Talk. I'll dive in, I'll get online and, and Google it or wiki it and try to figure it out. But I just thought that was weird. You know, that's the one thing I'm kind of like, what the hell? So if you got OBS guests, you got 88 to 98 guests you think I need to have on, let me know. Now, on one hand, it's like, well, hell, how can I even get to OBS guests when I can't even barely get to all the C10 talk guests? I'm working on it. I definitely feel like we can roll these things out, you know, three a month and then possibly even four. So um, let me know what you think. Other than that, I'm going back to vacation. I got a beer waiting for me and uh, I'll be back next week with the DCS guys. All right, guys, like the pod, love the pod. Have a great week. Hope you're out there having fun. Hope you're going on vacation with your family. And uh, tune in next week while you're traveling, listening to C10 Talk. Late. 
What up, what up, C10 Nation, or in this case, OBS Nation. So, uh, hey, the writing's on the wall, guys, and uh, I've been thinking about this. It's, uh, I think, the next move for at least C10 Talk, and I dig OBS trucks, and I thought, you know what, every, mm, let's just shoot for maybe one episode every other month, a little OBS Talk, sit down with some OBS builders, OBS providers, OBS companies, and uh, I think the 88 to 98 is going to take hold. I see that um, it's already happening. Some bigger players are picking them up. I bought an 88. It seems like it's probably been about a year ago, maybe even a little bit more. i um, enjoying it, enjoying driving it. My son's driving it primarily right now, but I do have some ideas and some plans. And uh, other guys I see in the in the scene are definitely uh, taking taking hold of it. They're buying OBS trucks. So I thought I would start off with OBS Talk, and I would start off with with Travis and the and the gang over at Pro Performance. Travis, welcome to essentially this OBS takeover, and uh, I've noticed that you guys are really kind of jumping on board with the OBS stuff. Yeah, yes, uh, glad to be here. Uh, yeah, we are. We kind of have seen it coming a little bit, and we've uh, always been working on developing new product and getting. I should. I don't want to say get on that trend because it, it's it's been here back in the 90s but uh yeah get back on it and and start to hopefully bring out new new products and development for those trucks and and kind of give it what they deserve well would you say that when you say new products i'm almost thinking that there's already been so many products i would say uh it's hard to go back because the obs truck is you know more of the truck that came out when i was in junior high and high school I would think at the time, no truck ever had more aftermarket parts built for it than the 88 to 98. I mean, you, you'd probably say, well, the square had to because, you know, they went from 73 to 87. So let's just say they win. But I think the way that we saw the 88 to 98, you know, Hot Rods by Boyd, the scene, the everything that we know about the 88 to 98s, there was a lot of really rad stuff available for them. And now it's kind of going full circle. I'm sure suspension and everything else is getting get caught up, but there's probably a lot of parts out there. Yeah, I think the 88 to 98 was the first generation of where guys started to really turn these into sport trucks. You know, it, it, back in the day, you know, when they came out in 88, I think that's, yeah, I think you're right, that they had the most widely widely available parts in the industry uh, for those trucks. So that was kind of the takeoff of guys like, well, hey, we can we can have trucks, drive them around, and, you know, make them sport trucks. And I don't think that was necessarily evident in the square bodies. You know, I don't know if a lot of guys had that thought process back in the late 80s. So I think it became more prevalent in the in the early 90s and in those years, the 88 to 98. So, yeah, I think, I think you're right. There was a ton of parts. And I think what's happened over the years is – everything's kind of shifted, you know, as we moved into the newer body styles and so on and so so forth and styles. I think a lot of industries kind of, as, as all of us guys went away from those and went back to the C10s and started doing those, the companies did the same. They kind of stopped making products and said, well, these aren't that popular anymore. So we're going to, let's not worry about that. Let's, let's, let's do the C10 stuff. And then now it's coming back full circle. And now they're kind of all visiting those trucks again and, and re-releasing products or, or doing new stuff or using new technology that wasn't around back then to develop better suspension and so on and so forth. So I think it was like the most accepted accessorized truck. So the, the, let's just say second gen square headlight slope, nose square body, although there was stuff available from, you know, the grill inserts, some of the different body mods, the 88 to 98 comes out, and I think at that point, the dealerships or GM, it was, I don't want to take anything away from Belltech or, you know, Hot Rods by Boyd or whoever was the, the predominant leader in aftermarket stuff for the, the OBS stuff, uh, the trucks, but I just feel like that's where we really started to see the, primarily the manufacturing start to hand over some of the accessories to these companies and it became very prevalent that you could get and accessorize an 88 to 98. And we were seeing some of the, you know, the most radical trucks. And again, I don't want to take anything away from those companies 
again, Hot Rods by Boyd, who did it all in house, who made it happen, who put roll pans and and lowered them and did what they did. I just feel like that truck, it, it, it was, you could get parts and whether the magazines were uh, somewhere where it was almost like a catalog within each magazine, a sport truck, you had mentioned that, that was a, you know, a very popular magazine. And, and the bottom line is OBSs were huge back in the day. They weren't called OBS back then, which is even, you know, more ironic and uh, they're going to be popular again. Yeah. And I don't know if you, and I don't know, I grew up in Southern California. So a lot of where that stuff happened and in the 90s I was in California and I don't know if they did this out in in Phoenix here but you could go to a dealer there's a dealer Richard Hubbard in Orange County there where you can go and you can just buy one off the lot color match bumpers roll pan bright teal painted grill I mean lowered on some Boyd wheels in fact I don't be I could be wrong but you might have been able to buy a Boyd style you know, like, I don't want to say a signature truck, but a Boyd truck from uh, a dealer, maybe like Richard Hubbard or something. I don't even know if they're around anymore, but yeah, you can just buy them right off the lot, go there, get your 92 Chevy teal extended cab lowered on 15 inch Boyds and drive it off the lot. So yeah, I I remember those, they would bring them to shows and they would have their new trucks and they'd have the the new ones that have been sport trucked out, I guess you can say. (laughs) So, and they would sell those just like that. It was, it was crazy. So I yeah, think I think the manufacturer uh, knew that they, did it. they had to tailor that and and say, hey, whether they were doing it in house or they were shipping out, kind of like the previous generations, where they would be like, okay, custom coach works, we need you to build this. These aftermarket companies were were building these trucks, taking them back to the dealer, and and even GM. I mean, if you think about like the Typhoon, the Cyclone, and then getting into that sport truck, and the manufacturing following suit or following the trend of you know, the way that people were customizing their trucks. And uh, that's kind of the beginning of the evolution of such a, a radical time. I mean, the square bodies, you know, back to even the first gen of square bodies. And you think about some of the GMC options and you think about the Gentleman Jim, the Bo James, and some of the custom things that GMC did. And Chevrolet did them as well. But that's the beginning. And then they evolved into giving the people what they wanted and those custom sport trucks and the step sides made a comeback. Well, I, I'd say a comeback. Some people would say they, they weren't, a, they were, they didn't have anywhere to go or they didn't go anywhere. I think in the OBS truck, you see a step side and it actually did, looked really good. It looked tasteful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And like I was saying, I think that's where that those trucks are where people started to use trucks for more than just trucks hauling stuff. They would drive them every day and this and that. So I think that's where it, uh, people, you start to see more of the style, like the, I think they also even call it the stylized side or something too, uh, the, you know, other than the step side or something, but yeah, you started to see more, more stuff like that step sides or, you know, extended cabs. Uh, Cause that was the first year of the extended cab. Well, I think that maybe they did some square body extended cabs, but that might've been third party. Uh, but yes, yeah, see extended cabs and everything like that. And yeah, the start of the customized daily daily driven truck for sure yeah I, d- I definitely think that the any square extra cab that you would see would be something that was third party and, and the custom work whereas uh, you know extra cab came out you know and uh, the 8898 and it's it's crazy to think about going back to that now and and uh I, you know right now the pulse seems to be just the single cab is popular the extra cabs are out there I don't see people snatching them up quite as fast or uh, as desirable as a single cab truck, a, a sporty truck. Obviously, the 454 SS trucks are will always be radical, will always be popular, and are very popular to this day. So, a lot of a lot of cool things for us to dive into from this podcast or this OBS takeover. Travis, you are a big OBS guy. You've had your fair share of them from the Tahoes, the two door hose to the trucks, um, not only just from your business and pro performance, but just from a fan, what's your, what's your take on it? What's your style? What's your favorite? And, uh, kind of describe that to the audience. You know, if you could build any OBS truck, what would you build and describe that to us? Yeah. Uh, I've always liked, well, of course the regular cabs, but, and I've had a few of them. Um, I did one a couple of years ago, uh, like you're saying through, through work, 
um, as a platform to build some of our big break components uh, from it. That's that's what we use. So I had the regular cabs, um, but my all-time favorite is the the two-door Tahoe, the two-wheel drive. So and that's actually what I daily drive now is a '99, uh, one of the last years, '99 uh, two-door two-wheel drive Tahoe uh, with the barn door. So and I kind of always favored the barn door. I, it's a little easier to get. I and I still use it to pick up parts and everything, so it's a little easier to get into the. The tailgate is obviously cleaner and I think the more desirable uh, setup for the back, but uh, I got the barn door and it's always been different. Our family is always, my dad's always like barn door, so I think that's maybe why I kind of lean towards that. I just think they're kind of cool and you can't, nothing, SUVs now you can't get barn doors, so I think it's kind of cool, something, something different. Um, and then lastly, the crew cab short bed, which were I think factory done only on the later years. Um, before that, it was a Centurion uh, conversion. But yeah, I always like crew cab short beds, uh, two door Tahoes, and then as of always the the regular cabs. That's pretty much so, all yeah, of them. I, you you pretty much like them all. He, so so I like the single yeah, well, cab. I like the four door. <laughs> I like the. So you just don't like the extra cab. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No extra cab. No four door Tahoes and no Suburbans. Well, no, and they're nice. I mean, I like them. But the, as far as like the three. Uh, the three favorites. That's uh, those are my three favorites. As I imagine, most people. I like think those, you're. But. I think you're spot on. Most people are going to go the same. So I'll dive into what I remember about OBSs, and and uh, we'll we'll have some guests on that are way more knowledgeable than me. Uh, came out in '88. I remember when it came out. It was very anticipated to come out because. The squares had made such a long run. I mean, if you think about the platform of the square from 73 to 87, all the way up to 91 in the crew cabs and the, the Blazers and the Suburbans, the trucks come out in 88 and it was all the rage. You know, I'm 88, I'm like 7th, 8th grade, and uh, just popular as can be, we would see them all over Phoenix and, and uh, the dads would have them and then they became, you know, the work trucks and just, you know, the people, I remember the cell phones in them and the Suburbans. Uh, 94 is the up to the uh, the square dash, which at the time seemed ridiculous and asinine because the middle vent like is completely blocked by that square dash. However, that passed uh, the engineering it did. I would say that that's something now that that I kind of am attracted to. I think it's kind of ironic and funny that I didn't like it as a kid. I remember when the new interior came out in 95. I was like, oh, this is so much better. But now if I had my choice, I would definitely take the square dash. Um, 95 new interior comes out. Uh, if you think about the timing of it, that's when airbags were something that the uh, auto manufacturing was pushing and saying, okay, we need airbags. So GM had to had to get a hold of that. And then 96, I remember being the Vortec heads. That was the big deal there. Um, all throttle body throughout. Uh, well, you got some different grill things going on there, right? You've got... Uh, you know, I definitely remember like the 98 grill. It's, uh, you know, that you knew they were doing something funky because it definitely freshened everything up. Is there some different things? I think what 94, 95 might be where they went to the, the third door, which is the passenger uh, right rear third door. So the extra cab opens up, but then they didn't even allow, offer that, I think, until 98. On those, I'm not positive. I think 94, 95 was the first year that that extra cab third door. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think that, I think you're right. It's later. I think that was maybe at 97. They did the third door, the suicide third door. I think it wasn't until 97 they did that. Um, yeah. And then in 97, they also went to the passenger airbag. So you got the, the double hump, I guess you can say you got the big passenger airbag on the, on the passenger side. Which I is added that in 97. Yeah, and they're just ugly. I think on the work trucks, you didn't they didn't have to have that or something because if you think about it, there was that big cutout, it was like a little shelf on some of those trucks. I don't I don't Yeah, 3 quarter tons. 3 yeah, quarter so tons didn't have those. Maybe they didn't yeah. require it. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I think cuz of the weight rating or something on the 3 quarter cuz of the heavier truck, I'm assuming. Something like that. Oh, um, I see. So, yeah, it had that little pocket. Had that little pocket in there. But it still had the big the big bump in it for the bag, just a little cubby hole that you probably couldn't really put anything in because it would just slide out anyway. So <laughs> I don't know how useful that, that was over there. Another thing yeah, I really they, liked uh, on the trucks was the uh, the HD trucks came out, so then it became a heavy duty, and uh, they had these big flares on them. Obviously, the Blazers had that option too. You'd see the trucks 
well, really all of them, but they had that flare. So if it was a four-wheel drive or kind of a heavy duty, they put some flares, some some factory flares uh, on the sides of the of the trucks, and they looked really tough. Uh, the smooth handles, that was probably one of the biggest things where you think about the square body era and people doing customization in sport trucks. They would, you know, would they shave the, the rails or shave the handles and... GM did that for you. I mean, GM came out with a smooth handle. That was probably one of the biggest things. They kept the two-tone, which was really classy. They kept the striping. A lot of, just a really classy truck when you look at it over time. Something somebody said the other day to me that I do agree with. They kind of said that the patina on an OBS truck will probably never take off. I think you and I talked a little bit about this, Travis, because yeah, they just, the way that they did the paint, they don't really patina well uh, the way the primer is. When I see them here in Phoenix, which if you think about a, a patina state, Phoenix and, and Arizona is going to be you know kind of your go-to there. A lot, a lot of sun. The trucks just don't look all that well. You know when they're rotted out, they're the the primer is showing through. You're not getting a lot of that color, and uh, they obviously changed up the paint. And and we, I feel like we associate with OBS trucks. I associate radical paint awesome paint awesome paint schemes and colors and uh so so if they do you know or when they do or as they come back it'll be interesting to see if paint makes a big comeback i'm not going to say paint has, has left us but patina was so much more accepted and uh just just one or is temporarily up at the top because people just don't want to spend the money on paint. I think with the OBS movement and the OBS craze, you'll see some radical paint jobs come back. And like you said, some of the manufacturing are, are tooling things back up. Obviously, the wheels that we are accustomed to in a 15, they're uh, they're making them in 20s and 22s now. Uh, Boyd's is doing them. Uh, Travis has a you know has an account with that, and he can get you any wheel you want if you follow Hot Rod by Boyd's. You need to check them out because they're they're repopping these radical wheels, and you can get them. You can get them for your OBS truck. Yeah, yeah, the Deuce, the Tri Fans. I'm sure we all remember those. Yeah, they'll actually build them all the way up to 24. So yeah, you <laughs> you can really it, it changes. It almost yeah, I don't want to say it changes the design, but it, it's a whole different. I think it's quite a different look when you put a Tri Fan, you know, from a 15 inch up to a 24 inch. So it make, it makes a, a big difference. But yeah, all that. I think all that stuff's coming back and kind of that to mention like what you're saying about the patina is yeah, those trucks usually when I guess you can say they patina, it's just gray primer underneath and yeah. it doesn't necessarily, the paint doesn't necessarily fade. It just flakes off. <laughs> so it's not a, uh, you're right. It's not a patina. It's just a, a, a flaking paint job at that point. So yeah, I think you're right. The, the paint, the paint will still be more popular on those. Plus right now you can get them relatively affordable compared to C10. So I think what that does is that leaves more room in the budget for guys to do paint where the, the patina is not as attractive, you know, cause like, well, you know, I bought this truck cheaper. I can, you know, my, my budget isn't, uh, is wasted on just acquiring a, a nice truck. So yeah, I can, I can paint it now, you know? So I, yeah, I think that plays a, a big role in it and, and what you'll see in those trucks. So what about aftermarket? You guys are going to start pushing some OBS stuff or extending your series of, of uh, OBS stuff. What's uh, what's some other companies, not only your companies, a guy comes into you and he's like, dude, I want to build an OBS truck. What what are they thinking? Where do we, where do we send them? Yeah. So we, uh, you know, we kind of saw a lot of these trucks coming back a couple of years ago. You know, I was like, I think these are going to come back. So a few years ago, like I said, I built that 90 and that was to do a platform for our brakes. So, you know, we came out with a big brake kit. So we have that, you know, for lowering Bell Tech has always been there. They're always going to be there. So Bell Tech is still and always did, always have made um, suspension for those trucks. There's other companies out there that do it as well, but the Bell Tech still doing suspension. Um, the, obviously the custom built void wheels, those are always be available. Um, so a lot of that stuff is out there, but I think a lot of the, the companies that have once 
tailored back, like for instance, bear, bear brakes. They did systems uh, for those back in the day in the, the late 90s, early 2000s. But as those trucks kind of went away, they just stopped doing those kits and they just never sold them and they kind of went away. So now they're revisiting all that saying, hey, we need to revisit all this, take all of our current you know brake systems that we do and now apply them back to the OBS and come out and re-release all these. So I think that's a plus because I think you're going to see more more products for these trucks that you did in the 90s really plus it'll be based on the newer technology like the brake systems that bears building now are better than they were in the 90s so i think you're going to see it, it's it's all going to be a good thing for all those companies to get back on board uh, we're going to start building some suspension for those trucks coil over kits and um for those because back then obviously you didn't have I don't think anybody was doing coilovers back then, really, for those trucks. Um, I don't think anybody did. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do that, and I, that's where I think you're going to see more products available that weren't available back in the 90s when those trucks were around in the first place. One yeah, of the big things I think kind of came out about a year ago was the Dakota Digital. So those gauges that we all know that stick, and uh, I, I have the 88, so I've got the – the the fan that you can literally go the you know, yeah you can yeah. sweep across you can go 85 miles an hour and if you keep going it'll come back around so you'll start to see the gauges go full circle <laughs> so from whatever that yeah. is at at at, at what is it that's six seven seven thirty is zero and you'll start to see the gauge kind of come back around so <laughs> that was always something fun back in the day oh yeah are you driving 60 and then you're going 55 60 62 59 and it's just bouncing all over uh yeah dakota came out they have had their gauges too and that they're coming out with more and they even make them up to the round dash but yes they they do gauges to, so really you can modernize them and still have that old school feel to them that 90s feel but with just better better aftermarket parts out there for them so i think it's it's going to be a plus so somebody who's had uh you know a few of these trucks what would you tell uh, the audience, what's the top three things? So you, so you find an OBS, you find an 88 to 98, let's say 88 to 94, and uh, you get it home. What's one of the first things you're like, okay, I've got to do this. I've got, you know, I got this grandpa truck. I, I need to do this. What's one of the first things that, you know, was kind of the notorious problems or fix big fixes on those trucks that you would recommend for somebody out there listening? Um, I would, you know, we all go for the stamps. So probably the first thing to kind of, uh, to wash the old man off of those trucks is, uh, do the, do the stamps, get, get it lowered wheels. And like you said, the, especially the 88 to 94s is the gauges do those three things. And, and those trucks above and beyond, you know, just getting them to look right. Those trucks notoriously have some of the worst braking that GM did for trucks. So the brakes are always a, a plus to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, most of us, you know, we get those trucks or anything for that matter. We, Hey, let's, let's put it down on some wheels and tires. And I think that's where you're going to see the biggest impact. I think that's, that can be, you buy a truck out there for, let's say you pick one up for, you know, four grand or, or whatnot. Uh, you go and buy a suspension kit, put it on some wheels. And I mean, I, to me, you instantly, you have a nice looking truck. It's for that price. It's probably running, driving. You can daily drive it you know other than the usual you know give it give it some maintenance but uh you can have a really nice driving daily driver truck that's lowered on some wheels and you're not in it for all that much so i would say stance uh the gauges and then the brakes would be my kind of three things which travis and the and the boys over at pro performance you guys uh you guys ha carry all of that and uh readily available the other thing that um you know I think it was Sam. Sam had bought like a, let's just say an O four truck. The one thing that I worry about with OBS, and I think that it'll, it'll be fine because it's the styling and the colors and the interior that at times you, you, you chase that just as much as, Oh, that's a, a 94. So a guy can go out and get an O four with an LS already in it. And a guy can go out and get a 94. So what's going to happen is if it gets too crazy, then you'll be like, well, I bought an OBS truck for six grand, but I can go over here and for 5,500 or for six grand, I can buy an NBS 04 with an LS already in it. So that was the debate that Sam and I kind of had one day talking about the trucks and the motors, because you got to think a 94 and an 04, 
not only 10 years, 10 years in advancements with an LS motor, but you know, there's a lot of miles on that little small block and throttle body. So definitely going to need some uh, some attention when it comes to the drivetrain and uh, getting in there and getting that cleaned up. One thing that when I got mine, very funny, was my father-in-law was out yard sailing and he found a little chip uh, we put it in and sure enough, man, it changed. It definitely changed the way the truck ran. It was running a little, a uh, little more fuel, a little faster idle, a little sportier. And then my buddy goose shout out to goose. He, he knew like an air raid guy. And so air raid was based out of Scottsdale and he had an original like 88 to 94 air raid little kit. So we put it on. So my little 88 OBS has a a computer chip in it and uh I, I don't remember the one i have i have the box but it, it definitely changed the way it ran i think it runs probably uh a little rich because we're putting a lot more fuel down to it but it's fun it's all out there it's all upgradable and uh before you know it people will be ls swapping them like crazy i know they already do there are some unique ones like uh, the one that's really cool is the the Indy Pace truck. That's a really radical uh, truck that you could try to find. Some guys out there have found, I think, uh, oh, Artie, uh, Tricky Air Suspension, he found one. And then Lethal uh, C10, Lethal X, yeah. has one of the baddest, most raddest 93 Indy Pace truck laid out on... I think it's 22s or 24s are actually huge. And he has that thing just lay in frame. Radical truck. Radical truck. I, I wish he, we could see more of that truck. We need to we need to make sure we get that out. And he'd be a good interview for me to add to this. Uh, I've got, you know, I've got a lineup already. I've got a lineup of probably eight guests to reach out to. So, again, if I'm going to do one every other month, I mean, that puts us, you know, eight months right there. So, you guys let me know. You let me know what you think about OBS Takeover. And uh, I think I think it'll be fun. I think uh, a lot. Of, let, let, here's one thing to talk about, Travis. How about where 67 to 72 guys decided to morph or find OBS stepside beds and put them on their 67 to 72? Yes. I remember that. Those, uh, yeah, they would put them on there and they would... Uh, I don't know. They kind of follow the body lines, but does that mean we're going to have 67, 72 beds on the OBSs? No, no, I don't think you'll ever see that. <laughs> I think what, I ha- think we'll I think what happened yeah. was guys couldn't find short beds to put on their 67 to 72s and uh, they were beat up or whatever. And then they thought, oh, that'd be cool. Let's put, and it was always a step side to me. I don't think I ever remember seeing a fleet side OBS bed on a 67 to 72 for whatever reason, I felt like it was primarily going to be a step side that I would see on the 6772. It just, um, I mean, I think at the time going back, you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Now, big time party foul. It does not look good. Yeah. Don't do that. No, no, don't, don't do it. And I, and I think they use step sides, I'm assuming, because if you look at an OBS truck, it sort of has that body line that the 67 to 72 has down there at the bottom of the door but it doesn't match as well up top. So when you have the step side, you kind of lose, your eye doesn't pay attention to that as much because the step side is set in, it's away from the, the cab, but you know, that lower rocker lines up a little bit better. I, I'm assuming that's why they maybe use the step side. That and maybe there's more of them out there. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think that lined up better. But yeah, shouldn't shouldn't do it anymore. Speaking of more of them out there, what is your perception on more OBSs out there? Will there is there still a ton of them out there? Is there still, you know, so many OBS trucks that it can it can survive and it can uh you know, we can we can keep the trucks where they're not profitable but where they're affordable and guys can get into, you know, a nice clean short bed. Is, is there that many trucks still on the road today in your perception? My opinion is I don't think there's as many regular cab short beds out there as people think. There is a lot, but I find that even even in the Phoenix area here, it's sometimes hard to find a, a nice, when I say nice, like a clean, like a good platform, regular cab short bed. It's not like you can hop on Craigslist and you can find 10 of them really easily. However, that may be a little different across the U.S., but I think it's, I don't want to say hard to find. You just have to search a little harder for that clean nice regular cab short bed you know usually they're a little more beat up and someone once told me one of my my friends said i i think what happened to some of those regular cab short beds is the cash for clunkers did you guys have that out here in phoenix 
back then I, in the 2000s where you yeah, we, turn it in, they give you two grand. Yeah, we did have that. I, I felt like for whatever reason, California was like leading the way on that. But I but I remember that and I remember, um, yeah, I remember it happening. So I don't I, I didn't obviously take a clunker in. So I can't speak, uh, you know, firsthand, but I do remember that. But for whatever reason, I feel like California led the way on that. Yeah, for some he, for, and he had mentioned that, and I'm like, you know what? That kind of makes sense. Like, I, I think that's it, maybe that's where a lot of them went. But for some reason, it is a little harder to find the regular cabs. But they're they're out there. You can still find them. You know, it's not by no means impossible. But I think they'll stay relatively affordable. At least I hope so, because I think it's a good platform, and I think it's the last of the the body styles where I think the the 2000 and newer ones. I think they get too new looking where the OBS still sort of has that classic look. And like you're saying, a lot of us grew up when we were younger with those trucks around the sport truck. So we always revert back to, you know, the trucks that we remember growing up, but I, I don't think it'll ever, I think that OBS still carries that kind of classic, still that classic look to it in a sense. I think it's why some guys even, you know, like yourself probably like the square dash because it, it looks a little, little more older looking than say a round dash where it looks more modern. It's nostalgic. Um, no, yeah. totally. Yeah. You know, I go to the junkyard. You can still find parts. There's still a lot of uh, OBS trucks out there. They're, you know, they're available, you know, they're affordable for sale. They are available in the junkyard. So it's a good time. I remember when the squares were like that, when you could go to the junkyard in Phoenix, you could find, you know, 6772s would come in every now and then, but you would definitely see a lot of squares where that has evolved and there's not that many squares or, or if they do come in, they're really bad and they've seen a lot of wear and tear. The OBSs are, they're coming in. They're still in a work truck phase. Uh, the interior will be interesting because we base a lot of stuff in Phoenix. You know, it's just getting sun rotted and the dashes are, you know, how cracked are they? Uh, it'll, it'll be interesting. It'll be, it'll be, I think that it will evolve into the MBS trucks. Uh, Travis maybe doesn't That's kind of what I got there. I think it'll evolve, but you know, it'll probably be 10 years from now. So who knows if, if, I mean, I'm driving an MBS now, so my daily is a, you know, an 07 classic. So if I'm currently driving an MBS to even think that far ahead to say, oh, the MBSs are, are classic now and they've come back, uh, it, time will only tell. And it all comes down to affordability. And I guess kind of going back to what Sam said, you know, if, if you're driving an 04 and it already has an LS in it and you can get it for five, six grand, uh, I think that might be the push at that point where, you you think well I'm gonna buy a '94 I love that style but I can get an LS truck uh, am I gonna buy a '94 and you know spend thirty five hundred dollars to forty five hundred dollars and then put an LS in it I mean it, it's a, it's a great recipe I think that's if you part can. of the process though I well I think it's part of the process so no I think the process being you know you buy a truck the part of the fun and the and the hot riding aspect of it is I'm gonna get something I'm gonna I'm gonna motor swap it. I'm going to do this and that where if you kind of buy one done, maybe it kind of takes some of that fun out of it because it's just there, you know, it's already done. It's a factory LS swap as I call it, you know, it's uh so I don't know, maybe, maybe that takes some of the fun out. So I think you'll still see the, the guys uh, doing the LS swaps and buying the, the OBSs. It, it's almost like they were meant to go in there anyways. When I did my 90, it fit in there so well. And I was able to use uh, a lot of the parts that was, that were already on the, the 90, you know, fan shroud, the fan from the LS fit right in the fan shroud. I mean, it was almost like it was meant to be. Like they, they thought about it and then just didn't do it until the next body style almost. That's what it seemed like. Well, you are 100% correct. It was funny. You said, you know, it's just like meant to be or the evolution and that's part of it. I guess I was kind of speaking when I say, a, a, you know, an 04, it's like, oh, I'm thinking pocketbook. Well, this isn't a pocketbook hobby. This is a hobby of this is what I want and this is what I want it to do and this is how I want it to look. It's definitely a, a want versus a need. And so you're right. It's like out of necessity, eh, but yeah, I want an LS in there. I want reliability in my OBS truck, but I want this radical truck. Do you think that they'll come back to that radical, we'll see radical paint with, you know, will guys, do you think guys will bring them back to that Boyd style but what they'll do is they'll they'll bring it completely back. They'll do we you know crazy colors and uh, and then big hoops do you, and, and then an LS. I mean, do you do, do you see that being the trend in the next five years of OBS trucks? Uh, I don't think so. I think they'll stay as a clean 
I, I think they'll be styled as we see a lot of the C10s out there. However, I think there's always going to be those few trucks and our builders and guys that build the trucks that go totally retro. So I, I think you'll always see those, but I think the, the, the majority of them are going to be the, the clean, simple lines, just smooth look, large, you know, big, big wheels, big brakes, that kind of thing. Kind of almost taking what a lot of guys do to the C10s and applying it towards the OBS. So I think that's going to be the new look with the OBS trucks, with the exception of the few that go totally retro. That's yeah. my opinion. I think that's kind of where we'll see it go. That'll well, be fun. It'll be fun to see it. And I, I think it's, you know, the, it's all good because if we get a guy who, you know, spend some money on some radical paint and, you know, body drops and slams it with some 22s and then, you know, big motor, we're all winning. We're all winning in that. And if, you know, guys are just dailying them and they want to have a nice little, you know, nice stance, nice hoops, like you said, uh, really, really class, you know, the truck and, and uh, just uh, like they are doing with the C10s and the squares and everything else. We're all winning. We're all part of the hobby. It's a lot of fun. Um, anything else, Travis? No, I think that's this you covered. I mean, this is the start of I, I think a lot more eighty eight to ninety eight you're gonna see out there. So this will be it'll be a good podcast to to do and I think there's gonna be a lot of good information out there, you know, over the years that's gonna come out and really help us all and bring back the OBS. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Um, for the audience, this is definitely not something C ten talk is not going anywhere and I'm not starting another podcast. This is just something that I figure, you know, I'll add a few episodes in every now and then instead of, you know, two or three that month, you might get an extra one, an OBS one. If you like OBS, you tune in. If you don't, then uh, you tune out. It's it's no bigger than that. I just feel like, uh, you know, I love Chevy trucks. Uh, we grew up with these trucks. It is an evolution and we're in it. We're, we're here now. The OBSs are here. The 88 to 98s. It's a fun truck. It's, they're actually... I mean, when you jump in my, when I jump in my OBS truck, it's, it's very comfortable. It's smooth. You know, you got the tilt, you have a, a few ergonomic things, you know, granted the, the gauges aren't the best, but, uh, good times, great times had an OBS truck. So here's the OBS trucks, 8898 OBS takeover. You'll see a little bit more. If you've got somebody that, uh, you, you want to hear from, like I said, I've got a list of probably about eight that I've just kind of off the cuff written down. But if you got somebody who you think is a just an OBS freak or geek or just really knows these things, uh, I'd love to sit down and talk to them. And uh, if you if you're passionate as well, or if you got some some facts, hit me up, Ronnie at C10 Talk, Ronnie at C10 Talk, and we're just gonna have a little fun with this, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Travis, uh, as always, thanks for sitting down with C10 Talk. And uh, if you guys need any OBS stuff, hit up Travis at Pro Performance. Hit up Nick. They're there anytime, and, and obviously, they're also your C10 specialist as well. Yep, thanks for having me, Ronnie. It was good, good talking to you. Okay, I'm going on vacation, bro. So uh, if I drop this for the audience, when you hear this, hopefully you had a great, kick-ass, fun, safe 4th of July. Uh, I envision this being uh, dropped probably a little bit after, maybe about a week after 4th of July. So uh, thanks for sitting down with us, Travis. Have a great week. Have a happy 4th, and uh, appreciate you, man. Yeah, absolutely. You too. Okay, bro. Late.